Is tonight the night the Knicks close out their series against the Pacers? Let's talk about all the hype surrounding Game 6 with Knicks fan TV co-host JD Sports Talk, who's in the building right now. Like your shirt says, man, the vibes are immaculate. How you doing, man? Brandon, thank you for having me. And, yeah, hopefully after Game 6, the vibes will definitely be immaculate for the New York Knicks. The vibes were immaculate last night at Stefan Marbury and uh, Camelo's event. Uh, the first time meeting you, and uh, we were like, bro, Game 6, I got to get somebody Knicks fan TV on to represent the vibes. Let's talk about it. They got a chance to close this series out on the road. What are your thoughts on the series so far? Listen, it's been a fun series. You know, uh, everyone's continuing to learn, at least on a national stage, about the resiliency and the toughness of, of this New York Knicks team where they are facing an opponent that is very high paced. Uh, they've had to adjust some games to their game, and they've shown that this team is a versatile team that has the ability to play slow it down basketball or let's run up the court basketball. They've been tested. They've had a few injuries with OG and Anobi, and they're continuing to add to their legacy of this season where they're proving that next man up, it's not only cliche, but it's actually true for this team because their depth has been tested and they have responded with some key role players off the bench being able to contribute, leading them to a 3-2 series. And Jalen Brunson continues to add to his legacy as a New York Knick getting them a superstar performance in game five, which is the swing game at Madison Square Garden. And here we are today, game six, closeout game in Indiana. And, you know, I expect Jalen Brunson to continue his superstar season. And I expect the Knicks to continue being mentally tough and playing well on the road. When you talk about next man up mentality, that falls on the head coach to put some of these guys who normally aren't in the situation that they're being put in, put them in position to win. So what's the biggest adjustment you'll say that Tibbs has made throughout this series that has this squad in position to put this thing to sleep tonight? The biggest adjustment that they made so far was in game five, where after game four, Tom Thibodeau, you know, this series is tied 2-2. You're looking now without OG and Anobi at what is the next, you know, lineup change you're going to make that can not only help Jalen Brunson offensively, but can help him defensively. And that was Deuce Miles Deuce McBride starting at the off guard position, going small ball, putting Josh Hart at the four, where now Josh Hart has to have the tough assignment of defending Pascal Siakam. But more importantly, Deuce McBride is now defending Tyrese Halliburton. And that adjustment, as you saw in game five, where McBride stepped up his game defensively, was able to take away Tyrese Halliburton completely away. Like Darrell Revis, you know, defending a wide receiver. <laughs> he completely shut him down, and that affected Indiana's ability to operate the offense. That affected Indiana's ability to push the ball up the court, and that also helped the Knicks offensively because Deuce McBride had a very good offensive game. So that adjustment, it was beneficial to the Knicks, and I think it'll continue to game six. Now on the road, Deuce McBride is tasked with the tough challenge of duplicating that performance in Indiana tonight. Deuce Island looking like Revis Island out there. Another dude who's been balling, Alec Burks. Man, let's give this dude his flowers. Did you expect this man to come off the bench and play so well these last two games? To be quite honest with you, I did not. And, 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 and with evidence of because, you know, he struggled since the trade coming over from Detroit. And it's been so surprising because we're talking about a guy that a lot of us were excited when they made the trade. We were like, wait, we're not only getting uh, Bojan Bogdanovic, but we're getting Alec Burks. We're getting a two-for-one deal. And Alec Burks over the past four seasons is at 40% or higher from the three-point arc. Mm. And you're wondering, you know, where did that happen? This is a second stint as a New York Knicks, so it can be the New York thing. There's been rumblings that he's held, dealt with a shoulder injury. But nevertheless, the thing about Alec Burks, and what I tell you, Brandon, I tell Knicks fans is, if you perform in the playoffs in this market, nobody cares about the regular season. Mm -hmm. And with this performance, nobody's even like, wait, this, did Alec Burke struggle? Nobody even remembers. I don't remember. And so great, great performance by him. Also, detail here, him being 6'5", when he comes off the bench and he's playing with Deuce, the ability for Tom Thibodeau to have him switch on TJ McConnell, have that size in front of TJ McConnell, who, as you know, has been a Nick killer. 
play dividends for them as well because TJ had a tougher time getting into his spots whenever Alec Burks was able to switch on to him. So Alec Burks, amazing performance. You're gonna again, it, it, it continues the motto. You're gonna need to do that again today on the road. On the road is a little bit tougher, but that's a more than a, that's three games straight now. Alec Burks with good offensive yeah. performances. Right now he's in a groove. All right, let's talk about tonight. Like you said, they're on the road. They got a chance to put this thing to bed. How did the Knicks in this series break this matchup down for us? It's going to be a tough game, Brandon. And, you know, the Indiana Pacers have won their last 10 home games. And that's dating even back into the regular season since mm -hmm. March 18th. They have not lost a home game. They won every home against the Milwaukee Bucks in the first series. And you, we all know both games in Indiana. And in also in those two games, the Knicks have to, tonight the Knicks have to get off to a good start. When they've won the first quarter in this series or tied, they've won the game. When they have not won that first quarter, they've lost. And in game three, the Knicks scored 20 points to Indiana's 29. In game four, the Knicks scored 14 to Indiana's 34. So that's 20 and 14 points in the first quarter. When you're on the road, quite frankly, and especially against a high fast-paced team, 20 points in the first quarter is not going to be enough unless your defense is stout. So look for the Knicks to get off to a fast start like they did at game five and, you know, try to take the crowd away. This is not Philly where there's a bunch of Knicks fans there. There are some Knicks fans, but it's not quite like Philadelphia. It's going to be very important to get it off to a fast start. And from there, you're going to lean on your superstar Jalen Brunson to bring it home for you. Talk about the watch party tonight. Where can people find Knicks Fan TV's viewing party? Uh, Knicks Fan TV viewing party tonight at Slate NYC, downtown Manhattan, 21st Street. You know, everyone's welcome to come on by. I know, Brandon, you'll be there. A lot of, uh, you know, supporters media will be there as well. Uh, CP, the franchise, obviously, will be there. I'll be there tonight. You know, let's let's have some fun and let's create a big moment tonight uh, for the New York Knicks. Hopefully they give us an opportunity to celebrate after yep. and go on to the Eastern Conference Finals. You need those vibes to be immaculate. J.D., thanks for hopping on, man. I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon.